Hi, welcome back. How you doing? What we're going to do now is, firstly, I'm going to go only into perspective mode, and I'm going to open one of my 3ds Max files. Go to my area that I'm working on here, and if we need to know which one it is that I'm opening first, it's going to be wall one. Okay, so wall one here, and what we can actually do as well is have it a new list. Being pros being worked on, and that'll create a new card just over here. See, and I can just drag that and move that to there. The good thing is this updates in real time. So if you've got another team member who has this loaded, they'll see this all being moved around in real time as well. So wall one is now being worked on. Okay. So let's go and find it over here. There it is. And just open it. Okay, now wall one is not a complicated looking item. I'm going to turn realistic shader off, just turn it shaded. Hit F4. And one of the important things that we need to kind of decide straight away is are we going to put this into a game engine, which I intend to? What parts of it should I keep and which parts don't I need? And I already know that, so I'll show you in a minute. And which parts can be culled, because they're not going to need to be seen. These are all important things. Are we going to need to see the back of this wall, for example? Well, to be honest, no. I don't think we are. I mean, we might need to later. In which case, you know, we can make a new copy of it. But for the moment, I don't think we do. So, I'm going to get rid of all the parts that I don't need. So, what I want to do first is just... Start marquee grabbing and deleting parts like this. And you've got to be very careful. You don't want to accidentally delete a part that will come in useful to you later. So just really going around this model, getting rid of all these edges. Basically, you don't need these. And if you don't need these, there's no reason for them to be there. I have select rather than select to move on as well. There we go, don't need those. Or those. And when we're done, we'll go around our model to make sure that we've both not deleted anything we need and have deleted everything that doesn't need to be there anymore. It's amazing how many times I forget to take things off that should have been removed or accidentally delete a polygon when I shouldn't have done. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen. Okay, now let's have a look down the side and see what's gone. While at the same time making sure that we haven't deleted anything that we really should have done. Shouldn't have done, rather. Now that looks fine, and already we've simplified our mapping process about a hundred times over. So I'm going to delete these surrounds here. Because these shoots, at the time when I made them, they seemed like a good idea, but... I don't really want them, not because they make unwrapping any harder, because significantly no, they don't, but simply because I don't think I need them. I can texture in if I need anything specific there. Okay, so I'm going to cap those two, then cap here. Done. Okay, Control S, just to quickly save my work. That way, if there's a crash or something, or the power goes out, or we get hit by meteorites, we won't lose all our work. <laughs> Now then, another quick thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be working with my model over here. Okay, just there. Now if I have my model highlighted, you'll notice that my axis for rotation, I can rotate it here. If I don't have it selected, it's spinning around over there. But I can move it over here and I'll be able to work on it in, with my UVW unwrap on. So what I'm going to do now is go U in my modifier panel, and there's my unwrap UVW. Now if you've never used this before because it looks so damn scary, don't worry, it's nowhere near as scary as it used to be. So if I open my UV editor now, the first thing we're going to see is a mess, just a tangle of spaghetti. Now, what we're going to do is, we're going to make some sense of this. Basically we want to be able to create what looks like a kind of... like those press-out cardboard toys perhaps you used to get as a kid and they had the pictures on, then you'd be able to assemble it yourself into a castle. I don't know if you used to get those books as a kid or not, but I did. 
And our job is to turn that into something that's kind of logical, that you could imagine cutting out and sticking together if it had little tabs out the side. Because at the minute we don't have that luxury. Okay, so a couple of things. First of all, if I just select everything here, and then move it over to there. This box is what we want to keep everything in. Okay, we can work outside the box, but I want everything we create to be inside the box when we're done. Then this will turn into our texture area. Um, secondly, you can see here that we've got basically lines, overlapping lines, overlapping lines. This is no good to us. Basically, if I was to project a texture onto this, then everything underneath it would be hit by the texture, including this, which as we can see is inverted. Okay, if I go to select by poly, we can see that polygon there. That one polygon is just this part here of a crenellation. And then underneath it, I don't know if we can be able to select this or not. I'll just move that out of the way to see if I can. It's such a messy, messy, messy model. But you can see these are all stacked on top of each other. Just awful. Yeah? So there's no actual sense to our model. I know I've messed it up even more, but that hardly matters. Now, one of the options we can do is we could select everything, okay? These are your selection sets here, by the way. I'll just go to Mapping and Flatten our Mapping. Just click the defaults, and it'll do that, okay? But this isn't suitable for what we want. This is not going to do us any good whatsoever. Simply because, I mean, you're not going to be able to tell what lot the parts are. There's going to be a lot of texture seams, things like that. Stuff you don't want. So, I mean, can you see exactly which part's which in this? This isn't even the right way up, look. It's upside down. Some of these are bent. It's going to be very, very difficult, basically, to tell which is which. So, let's move this over here again. And, incidentally, if you're not used to it, these are our tools up here. Okay. One of the tools I'm mostly going to be using is the freeform mode, which combines, rotates, scale, and all the rest of them in one go. I'm also going to be using projection over here, mostly planar mapping. Now, what I want to do is break this down into the pieces that make the most sense to kind of do one at a time or whatever. So. I want to get to there. Zoom in a bit here. And I'm not interested in what's over there at the minute. I will be at the end to see if I've left any. What I want to do is just select the inside of these windows. Here, here, and here. And then I'm going to click the Grow XY Selection. I'm just click like that until I have these bottom parts. See? Then I can go here. Like that. And that's all part of one wall, okay? So if we look over here, we can see where it is. Basically that is all the pieces that are highlighted here in red. But we can simplify that. So what I'm gonna do is just click the planar map button, and then turn it off. And then if I go over here to my freeform mode, I'm just gonna scale that down so it's a little bit smaller, like that. About that high. So it seems in scale with this, basically. There we go, and now we know exactly what that is. That's the bottom of our wall, and it's at the bottom position, yeah? And it's the right way up, as you can see. Now what we can do is, if we look at these, one of the problems we're gonna have is, if we texture it this way, then the inside of the windows is gonna look fine. These parts here on the outside, they're gonna look fine. However, the edges, which are quite small, and the inside edges, which are quite large, are just gonna be streaky textures, because they're hidden underneath this. So what we need to do is make these basically a little bit smaller so that the actual UVs underneath are visible. So I can do that using the scale selected sub-objects and just constrain it into the vertical and do that. And then if I constrain it to the horizontal, I can't do all three at once because they'll basically all crush themselves together. So do it like this. One two, three. There we go, and I'll select all three. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Grow, and we can see an expand. Grow, it expands. 
grow, nothing happens. Why is that? Because there's actually UVs under there as well. So let's do it again. Make it a little bit smaller this time. And now, grow, grow. What I'm going to do is what I did before. And again. And again. There we go. Okay, so now that makes much more sense. And when the project, when the map's actually put onto this, um, it'll look much better in the viewport. Okay, now we want to separate off this piece here. Now what I'm doing is I'm separating them basically by materials. Yeah, this one here is going to um, have a different material on it to the crenellations, which are going to be kind of a much more plain. Plain. They're going to look like they've got some sort of whitewash or granite or whatever on it. it makes it look nice and strong. So I'm going to do what I did before, just to grow out this selection, like that. And we can see it comes all the way up to the top there. So what I'm going to do next is just go into these. Now remember, I want my actual crenellations to look more concrete -y, Or solid stone, or whatever the heck it's supposed to be. I don't know. Alright, and again, I'm just going to plane our map it and turn it off. Now, it's obviously overlapping our piece here at the moment, but if I just go here to freeform mode, I can just start getting our pieces kind of lined up on top of each other a bit. So that one's going to go there. And I'm leaving a space between the two, reason being that I want our crenellation to go in there. Although I could just as easily have it running down the side here, I might do anyway, we shall see. I'm now going to bring this one down a little bit. If I want to, I can hold shift, and that'll constrain it to one axis when I drag, which is kind of helpful. Actually, I'll put the two together, there we go. Top and bottom, it'll make it easy when I apply the brick texture anyway. Okay, now, with these three, we can do the same as I did before. It's one of those things that you have to do, it's important. There we go. And again. And just grow it out. It's amazing, no one's, I don't know if anyone's managed to make an interesting UV unwrapping tutorial. Maybe I should add some like rap music or something. I know when I was like first starting off as an artist, the last thing I wanted to learn about was UVing because it looked so flippant boring. However, it's phenomenally important, especially in game dev. Okay, pull back. So let's have a look over here, and you can see that our mass over here of stuff has just reduced a lot. So that's helpful. So let's go and start unwrapping over here then. Now, if I just select down here, you can see that's highlighted and there's a blue line there which shows that that actually connects onto there. So let's go into here and get the fronts of our crenellations. And depending on how you're going to be doing your model, that may be the more detailed area. And you can see I've accidentally selected that polygon there. I don't want it, so I'll alt click it. Okay, so we can see which parts are selected now. This upside down part and that upside down part. But if we just play in our map it, that'll put them in the right direction. And then we can bring them down like this. And what I'm going to do is just have them about that high. Bring them over here. Like so, and we can see that the underside is visible, which is good. It's not quite long enough, so what I could do is just grab those verts at the bottom here, and then just drag them down. Remember what I said about constraining it? Shift, drag. There we go, and that will give a little bit more real estate for texture on the underside if you wanted staining or whatever. Now. I'm going to come in and do the inverse. It can be quite hard to see inside these, but if 
I just go to my polygon select that was me hitting zoom by mistake there we go don't want to get inside these deselect the parts I don't want and I definitely want this walkway there we go so we can see which parts they are now and uh, I'll probably place them upside down across there so let's just open I mean let's just uh, press our plane our map button okay and turn it off again otherwise we can't do anything and just roughly get these to the right size first once they're in the right area we can work on them a bit more There we go, and you can see the walkway, the crenellation and everything. I'm just going to flip them over so that I know basically how to make this work. Or I can keep them the same way up, I suppose. Decisions, decisions. If I flip them over and hold down shift, I can obviously constrain it. I don't think so. I think I'll just have them like this. So I'll get them a bit closer together, making sure there's a gap still between them. There we go. And next I want to go and do these crenellations here which is the top of the crenellations. Make sure I get all the polygons. There we go. And just a quick planar map. And off. Now there's actually an error that you can't see here. It looks fine, but it really isn't. So bring that down because it's quite a thin piece. Then I'm going to bring that up here because there's a lot of hidden parts so again making sure I've got shift held constrain it, move it like that not all of them are hiding a polygon you see it's every second one like that and I'm just kind of doing this by eye There we go, that's all of them. Like that. Now, obviously this is a bigger piece, so we can either shrink it down a bit and have it down here, or we can just stick it at the top where there's some spare room. It depends how you want to do this. I think what I'll do is I'll put mine here. Okay, my crenellation. Now, still got plenty of stuff at the top here that we're going to have to be getting on with as well shortly. So let's uh, move on with that. So what I'm going to do now is use my selection. I'm going to start grabbing these pieces here. Now this is a much more complicated shape. Much more traditional for the kind of whole, oh god, do I really have to unwrap this school of things. However, yes you do. That's why I'm here holding your hand. not really holding your hand because that would probably creep some of you out and I have got quite big horrible calloused hands but you know what I mean oh incidentally I know Bob Ross says there's no such thing as mistakes there's only happy little accidents you should really try and keep your happy little accidents to a minimum when unwrapping and I know I'm using a very simplistic version of unwrapping Okay, I'm not trying to make like a single uniform piece, I'm just trying to make it tidy. Okay, now if you look over here, you can see how this is all separated off into bajillions of items. So, what I'm going to do is plane art and bring it back. And there we go. This is kind of where we need to start from. Now, the main issue we have here is that these middle pieces in here. If I pull them in a bit, you can see there's some hidden polygons. So I need to scale the selected segments a bit, like that. Now then, I'm also wondering where that polygon is. There it is, so we didn't even get it right. How embarrassing. Do it again. 
and we will keep doing it until you get it right. Nee, 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 nee. See what I mean about happy little accents? Tragic little accents, more like it. There's another one there, look. I was wondering why this was not straight. Now it is. Okay, so, again, move this up. And now I can work here just to basically small these in a bit. As you see, we then don't lose these pieces here. And we can straighten them, which is a help. Okay, now I'm going to go select by edge. Select those three, just use the move tool. Just carefully moving those up. And I can move these down at the same time. Okay, so the top of our crenellations, obviously. Now here, and then here, because these don't need to be so elongated anyway. There we go. That looks a lot more logical, I think you'll agree. And what we can do now is just select all of these and just kind of compress it up a bit. Just use this. Let's get it to a kind of shape and size that's ideal for what we are after. And place it at the top here. So I'll just move this one down a bit. In actual fact, I think, remember I said I might rotate and move it over there? So I think that's what I'm going to do. Shift, rotate, so it's locked to one axis. There we go, because we can always label it, and that way we'll know what it is later on anyway. Okay. Let me get these arranged a bit better, there we are, and I'm just going to increase the height of these crenellations here, there we go, alright so that's a much more logical front of our castle there, including these parts that are now unfolded, so what we can do here is go to the back of our model and do the rear of our crenellations, which I can put above this. So I'll just start taking these. I'm just making sure they're carefully selected. And the good thing is, I mean, I can see on the map to my right if something's gone tragically wrong or not. Okay, there we go. So, plain on and off. There we are. Just push these into there. Now then, we're not getting a lot of real estate at the top there because this is using up quite a lot of space. So I think what I'll do is I'm just going to reduce the size of that just a bit about there and then we have more space for this one which I think will require more detail anyway when it comes to texture so there we are you can manually kind of set these things up but uh, I mean automatically set these things up but like I say it just doesn't tend to look as good okay and now I can bring that down and just make it a bit bigger. Now you can see there's not a lot left really, is there? Which is good. So again, we can make sure 
as we select these that there's no parts that shouldn't have been selected and the good thing is that I don't think we have any really too many wasted polygons I mean I have got a few extra edges that I could have probably done with that but to be honest I'm sure you can tidy those up yourself the actual model is very low polygon it's not going to tax any game engine not even the Warcraft one all you have to do really is just make sure you have not selected any wrong polygons. Right, you see everything in there selected now. Just nip around it, make sure it's all clean. And then projection map it. There we go. Bring it over here. Just like so. And first things first, gonna just bring it down like that. And then Do what I did before, which is just pull out the pieces like that. Because, like I say, if you don't, you're going to have some really severe streaking going on. selected though. There we are. And that is this piece here, which I can then rotate, shrink, and move. And basically get it into a good position in here. Now I have a bit of wasted UV space, which is this bit here. But uh, as the castle isn't mad detailed or some sort of organic masterpiece, really it doesn't matter too much that we haven't used it every square mill. Although, you know, if you're in a game studio being beaten to death now for using my technology, I mean my methodology, I do, I do apologise. However, we have unwrapped something and we made it look a lot more logical than the automatic unwrap did. Control S, just to save it. I'm going to do a couple of additional things now. So the first thing I want to do is go to Tools. I want to render my UVW template. And it's up to you what aspect you want. I think 1024 will be okay, actually. I was originally doing 2048, but 1024 should be fine. Uh, just render UV template. There we go, it's done. Literally takes a couple of seconds. And then all I have to do now is just save image. And I'm in wall one already, so wall one. UV template. Save as a JPEG. Best quality. Close that down. And I can close that down. Turn off sub selection now. Okay, and Control S to make sure that's saved, which it is now. And if I go into my material editor and just create a basic material in my diffuse, by the way, you'll notice here I'm in the compact. Um, let's go here, bit map, and if I just grab my wall one UVW, press F4 so edged faces are not on anymore, and click show shaded material in viewport, click and drag, and there you can see that it has applied our simple yet, you know, correct texture, and you can see there's no real stretching going on. Or anything like that, which is good. Alright. So, what I'm going to do with this is, firstly, I want to uh, move it over to Trello. So, being worked on the wall, it will be marked as unwrapped. Drop back over to Photoshop. And here's my base wall. Um, I believe I mentioned that in the last part. I'm going to be using it a bit. And if I open my UVW template, which is in wall one, there we go, and click plus, uh, Control Plus so I can see it slightly better, you'll see that we have plenty here that I can now work with. 
So, what I'm going to do is just uh, control, sorry, select magic wand tool, select there, and do uh, control shift I. And I'm going to make a new layer. And basically, I'm just going to fill all this. So, let me just turn off my background. There we go. Okay, and that will basically act as a mask for the next part, which is my base wall PSD. Now that's a little bit big, so image, image size, and I'm going to reduce it by 50%. That way the bricks will be scaled correctly. There we are. And do a control A, control C. And I'm just going to get them in the right place, so one there. Bring it right down. Like I say, it's not the greatest brick job in the world, but it'll do. It'll do. There we go. And Control E just to make that one. And then if I just right click and create a clipping mask. Okay, you can see how that's kind of came in. That's fine. Now, I don't want my clipping mask to apply down here. So I can get rid of these bits. Remember what I said, this is just very quick and dirty texture creation. A lot of the hard work we're going to do with this, you'll be using the demo version of DDO and NDO and stuff, which will make things tremendously easy. All right. Oh dear, a little bit tired now. Um, these parts at the top here. So if I just hide these parts, okay, and just keep my background on. There we are. And... One of the other things I want to do is just get rid of that bit there. Uh, let's see, I want it background colour. So it's white. That way I can kind of see through what I'm doing here. I'm going to add a new layer. I'm also going to label these layers, so layer properties, and this is going to be the wall layer. Brick. And this is just going to be some plain concrete, really simple stuff. So the walkway and everything is going to be concreted or grey stone or whatever. So let's go and find a colour for some nice grey stone. Grey stone, there we go. Here's some. There's even a picture of some grey stone there. That's on photo bucket and that's on picture push. Well, there we go. What's picture push? It looks like some sort of a gallery thing. So, copy image. Okay, and if you haven't got this one, just take any one that you find that seems suitable. Uh, file, new. 500 by 500. Not especially detailed. Control A, Control C, and I can literally paste it into the other one. Or what I could do is go to my filters here, other, offset. Now then, this is 500 by 500, I think. So if I make it minus 250 by minus 250, and we can see now that it's not going to tile with that there. So let's see if we can fix the color up. Do a fill, make it content aware, just to get rid of some of that striping. Still quite striped across it. Just want to remove a little bit of this to stop it being so samey. There we go, that's better. And now it will tile. Control A, Control C. Go to our base wall. Oh yeah, and I'll save this. Modified layer as well, so save as. And reference PSDs, grey stone. Just so I know what it is. Right. Back to my UV template. As we can see, it's not especially huge. However, we can start kind of bricking them together like this. There we are. Now I'll just collapse these down. One, two, three, four. Hide that for a minute. I'll just get up my background here. Uh, 
Okay, just uh, Control Shift I, so I've got all these parts selected. Control C. Actually, no, not Control C. Bugger it. I'll just create a new layer just here. And again, I'm going to fill it like that. And then I'm going to get rid of the parts that I don't want covered in my basic concrete. So those parts basically. Make that visible again. And again, I'm going to create a clipping mask. There we go, like that. And I'm going to rename this wall layer stone. Click OK. Right then, now down here, where these windows are, if I just get in close, what I need to do is select those. And I'm going to make sure that my select is additive select. So basically everything I whenever I use my select tool. I'll just again hide this wall there. Whenever I use my select tool, it adds to it rather than, you know, not adding to it. And I want to go around the outside of this. Try and be as accurate as you can. I'm not being accurate because I'm in a hurry hurry. One, two, three. Five. It can be a little bit fiddly. And then six. Work it again. There we go. And same as before, I'm going to create a new layer. So I'll create it up here. And just fill them. There we go. And then I'm going to copy this layer. And let me see. Release the clipping mask on this one. Just drag it straight up to here. Because I want this to basically be sitting on top of those ones there. So Control D. Move that over to there so it's on top of the windows. Create a new clipping mask. Oops, wrong one. Create a clipping mask from that piece there. See, so it's all filled in. Lovely. And this will be layer properties. Uh, let me see. Wall layer windows outer like so. Okay, so these are all kind of held together quite nicely so far. If I just hide my background and turn the other pieces on, you can see our base texture and how it kind of seems to be working okay. I think this one's hidden. Yeah, it is. <coughs> but I can drag it up and move it out of the way, so that's not a problem. Right then, so next what I need to do is see delete parts that I'm not using probably. So if that's my wall layer brick, I don't need those parts visible. Wall layer stone. Did I not apply? Oh no, I didn't, did I? Dear me. So I need to duplicate this layer. Like that, and create an additional bit that goes under there. So, what I'll do is I'll duplicate this layer and let's move it along. There you go, just so it's in here, like that. Much better. So, now both these parts have been affected. And then, what I need to do now is go back to my background. So, I'll just hide these pieces again. And what I want to do is select the insides of these. And I'll just use the additive method because it's turned itself off rather cunningly. Okay, and I want to grow that a little bit. So selection, modify, expand. Maybe by two pixels. No, not by two. I'll de expand that by one pixel. 
checked one there just so it's in the right area and if I go all the way up here just unhide everything and I want to create a new layer just turn that over and just use the fill tool okay and that gives us our simple windows there okay so to go layer properties and wall layer windows click OK and that's done right then um, what's next well it's probably about it for this UVW template really so what I'm going to do now is save it off so I can save as and now we've gone from using the wall one UVW template to wall one basic texture okay, that way we know what it is and if I was to go now into my material editor in 3ds max I can just change my bitmap here to my wall one basic texture and it'll ask me if I want to use individual layers or collapse it all, I'll just collapse it all okay and you can see now how this kind of fits together and how we don't really have any stretching going on which is good I realize it looks pretty primitive and basic so far but that's okay we can get around that soon I also realize I made a slight error in my UV W template because that's a bit more squashed than that but at the minute it just looks like it's made from two different kind of bricks so I'll pretend I meant to do that okay pretend I didn't really it's a mistake it means this should have been taller than uh, this one was basically too tall, this one wasn't tall enough in the UVW template. Just look. There we go. Just to show you. So, this should probably have been the same height as this, really. A little bit higher, and then these bricks wouldn't be quite so squished up there. We can get around it, we could compress these bricks if we wanted to. Uh, let's see. Should I bother even doing it, I wonder? Eh, no, can't be asked. But, you know, you get the idea. You can just scale them. Anyway, uh, that brings it to a close for wall one. So what I'm going to do is open my cello over here and just go across one. Bring wall one markers textured. I'm going to double click on it and add a note. Note, the bricks at the bottom are not quite scaled correctly. I can either pretend that's what I wanted, or I can just them later when no one is watching. Ha ha ha. Right, click comment, done. And like I say, I can add the file for this if I want to, so it's available to the cloud or anyone else who's working on it, which is cool. It also marks that there's now two comments on this, and you can see when it's been moved from list to different list. Excellently useful. All right then, so let's see. The next thing we'll be doing after this will be wall two, but I'm also going to create a new list, and we're going to call this list the Quixel, uh, what's it, Quixel Tools. because I'm going to make a variant of our simple texture that I'm then going to pass into the Quixel tool set. Okay. I'm not going to do that right now though, I'll make an additional tutorial for this that basically bolts on at the end. Okay. Until next time, TTFN.